Kiri Travel is pleased to be bringing you this webinar today. We're here to explore South Vietnam. And I'd like to start by turning it over to the General Manager for Kiri USA, based in the United States, Michael Healy. Welcome, Michael. Hello, Lee, and thank you so much for the kind introduction. And for everyone joining us today on this webinar, thank you very much for taking part. We're very excited to continue our educational webinar series on our destinations, products, and the Kiri Travel experience. Our passion for discovery is what drives all of us at Kiri Travel, and we take great personal pride in sharing that passion with our tour operators, travel agents, and your clients. In today's upcoming webinar, we'll discover why Southern Vietnam holds such a special place in our hearts. Before getting to that, I would like to give you a bit of background about myself and Kiri Travel. We're a strictly business-to-business -business destination management company with offices in Myanmar, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Vietnam, Indonesia, Sri Lanka, and a support office in Denver, Colorado, where I'm based. Although looking outside my window today at this blizzard, you would think it was the Arctic Circle. Walking here in the United I work here in the United States to provide real-time assistance to our North American-based agents so that we can best support you from both sides of the globe. That means I'm here to help you from itinerary building to on-the-job sales training and everything in between. Kiri Travel was founded over 20 years ago and has flourished due to our commitment to highly personalized service, innovative itineraries, and unique experiences. Most importantly, it's our passion for travel that drives our success. At Kiri, we focus on the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. The local people in our destinations are what really creates the ideal trips for your clients, from our guides to our office staff and the memorable people clients meet along the way. The warm and charming nature of the people we put your clients in touch with is what really creates these ideal experiences. Because of this, we strive to give back via community-based tourism projects and helping to fund local entrepreneurs. We also place a great deal of emphasis on sustainability when it comes to tourism. From our involvement with Travelers Against Plastic and our offices green accreditations, we have a large focus in on cherishing this beautiful planet we all call home. Through ours and your success, our profits allow us to continue to use travel as a key component in creating a better world. At this time, I would like to introduce you to my colleague Florencia, our country manager in Vietnam and now living in Ho Chi Minh City by way of Buenos Aires. She's going to share with you her expertise on Southern Vietnam. So Flor, we do appreciate you burning the midnight oil here this evening. I know it's quite late over there, and I think everyone's excited to hear about Southern Vietnam. So why don't you take it away? Okay, thank you very much, Mike, for that introduction. Um, um, good afternoon to everyone. Uh, bueno, I'm Flor, as Michael said, I'm Flor, Kiwi Vietnam Country Manager, so it's a pleasure to be here, uh, being part of this webinar with everyone. So first, I'm going to give a little bit of an introduction of the offices that we have in Vietnam, and then I will talk, I will describe a little bit of the things that we will talk today. Uh, so Kitty Travel has two offices in Vietnam, one in Hanoi and one office in Saigon. We have these two offices not only to create a long-term relationship with our suppliers and partners, but also to ensure that our clients are well taken care of, are well taken care of all through the country. Our Ho Chi Minh office is the head office of the country and the Hanoi office is our branch office, taking care mainly of reservations and customer service matters. Vietnam has a north to south distance of 1,650 kilometers. It's not a particularly large country, but it's a very long one. Because of the differences in latitude, the climate in the country tends to be different from place to place. And geographically, Vietnam can be divided in eight regions. So we have southeast, Red River Delta, Mekong River Delta, Northeast, Northwest, North Central Coast, South Central Coast, and Central Highlands. We could spend hours talking about Vietnam. However, for this time, we will focus on our loved Southeast Mekong River Delta regions. And if time allows, we will also talk about two of Vietnam's most fascinating islands, Phu Quoc and Con Dao, which are also located in Southern Vietnam. So first, we will start talking about Ho Chi Minh City. So Ho Chi Minh City, formerly known as Saigon, is one of the largest cities in Vietnam. The first impression that every traveler gets when arriving to the city is a mixture of shock and excitement. 
As you all know, the traffic, the noise, the everyday life on the streets and the very humid and hot weather results in Ho Chi Minh City being a very particular and interesting city, not only in Asia, but I would have to say that also in the world. Saigon's main sites are a combination of the country's past and history, French and Chinese influence with a touch of religion. The War Museum, the Reunification Palace, the Notre Dame Cathedral, the Post Office, the Saigon Opera House and the many unique pagodas to be visited are all must seen of the city. But there are also so many other special things to do and try in Saigon. One of the advices we always give to our partner agents and clients is to give Saigon a chance to stay at least two nights in the city. Having only one full day is not enough to see what Saigon has to offer. Among the different experiences we can arrange for our customers, there are three of them that are our top three experiences. All of them are very different, but have the same thing in common. All three excursions are focused on people. One of them, it's all about a war interpreter and his life experience. The other one is about an art specialist sharing her knowledge of Vietnam's history and culture through art. And the last one is a whole different experience, connecting our travelers with locals and sharing one of the best part of their culture and something they feel very proud of, which is street food. So we're gonna talk about these three signature experiences. And first we will start with battlefields of Vietnam. So we all know Vietnam past and history is one of the things that every traveler coming to Vietnam is seeking to learn more about, right? It's not easy to talk about certain things, especially due to the fact that the Vietnam War took place not so long ago, and can still be a strong topic of conversation. Even if what happened is already in the past, it's true that some people can find it hard to talk about. Having said that, there are also some other people who want to share their experience and their knowledge with travelers. For them, it's also important that their life experience is known. And this is the case of Mr. Hai, which is a person that you will see on the picture. He's a war veteran who used to work as an interpreter for the US forces during the war. Mr. Hai is an absolutely amazing person. He's very funny, very friendly, and he's looking forward to share his stories with everyone. With Mr. Hai, the whole experience of Saigon will be different. The day will start visiting the Kuchi tunnels, where the clients will spend the morning exploring the underground routes until noon, where lunch will take place at a noodle shop, where the travelers not only will taste one of the most famous local dishes named pho in Vietnamese, but also they will have lunch in a shop, which is to be the base for many Northern Vietnam operatives and meetings in the 60s. The top floor of this restaurant displays not only original furnishing of the times, but also photographs, medals, and other items from, that, from what once was a hiding and secret spot of the Viet Cong Party during a conflicted Vietnamese period. After lunch, Mr. Hai takes the clients to the War Museum, where photographers, where, sorry, where photographs and remaining, remainings from the war can be seen ending the day at the Reunification Palace, site where the fall of Saigon took place and consequently the end of the Vietnam War. In my opinion, what makes this day so special is Mr. Hai and his willingness and openness with travelers adding his personal experiences to the history of what happened here. He will certainly make the day very special to our clients and we love to share his stories with them. So this is quite a really special tour and one of our favorite ones, of course. Uh, this tour is guided especially by Mr. Hai, so it's really important that if we have clients interested in booking this tour, uh, to know in advance. So the second tour we will talk about, second signature experience we will talk about, is Vietnam, Vietnamese history through colors. There are many ways to tell a story, and we all know how incredible complicated Vietnam history is. Uh, through the art of Vietnamese painters and artisans, travelers get on board this signature experience where they will embark a fascinating journey beginning with Vietnam's craft guild artisans and then passing through all the different periods and stages the country went through. We will go through imperialism, influence of modern European art, the appearance of combat, combat artists during the war, and finally the recent rise of contemporary artists. 
This tour combines visits to private galleries and collections together with the Ho Chi Minh City Fine Art Museum. And it's clearly a different way to understand Vietnam's culture and past. From my own personal experience, I can say that this is a great excursion to do, but especially on the first days in Vietnam. It gives a nice introduction and insight to the country, and I will say that it's also kind of an eye-opener for the rest of the trip. It's definitely a great way to begin every traveler's journey in Vietnam. Sophie, the art specialist who created and leads this tour, is fascinating. It's a fascinating, knowledgeable person, and she has a very unique way of explaining Vietnam history through art. This experience lasts for four hours, and it can be combined with any other city excursion in Saigon, as it usually starts in the morning and finishes before noon. It's also worth mentioning that for any art lover traveler in Hanoi, which is the north of the country and the capital of Vietnam, we also have an art tour that can be combined with Vietnamese history through colors and will result in a nice and complete view of Vietnamese art through the, year, through the years, showing the contrast between the different regions of the country. Again, this is a super special tour. Uh, not only, sometimes people think that this is only for art, lovers, but I think that it's a great experience for everyone. Uh, you can understand history through the eyes of, through another version, through another way, and it's a really way of trying to understand how things happen in the country. And again, if we can do this at the beginning of the trip, that will be great, and it can also be combined with the tour in Hanoi. So the next signature experience we will talk about is our famous and favorite motorbike street food tour. So this is definitely an experience. It's an amazing experience and a favorite one by many, many customers and also by me. Uh, I find this tour really special. One of the greatest things this country has, we all know it's the food, right? Especially the street food. If you travel in Vietnam, uh, you will see that it becomes evident how much time Vietnamese love to spend on the street. It's very common to see the typical little plastic chairs in super small alleys selling traditional food in street stalls, which probably have been there for more than a decade. And this is the reason why these dishes are so delicious. Recipes have been shared among family members and through generations, resulting in the seller being an expert chef on the dish he or she is offering. Having the opportunity of trying Vietnamese street food is already something amazing. But doing this while riding on the back of a motorbike is even much more exciting. The very well-trained motorbike drivers will take you to their favorite spots, going through small hidden alleys of the city for you to try the most delicious street food dishes which also were handpicked by the team to make sure that the travelers get the opportunity to try the real Vietnam, the real local flavor of the well-known Vietnamese street food dishes. This is also a four hours food experience which take place during the evening. And besides in a great way to sample local dishes, it's also a perfect way to see the city at night. So nowadays we have a lot of clients that are vegetarians or they have special food requirements, so this is not a problem. So if you ever have a client with this type of food uh, requirements, we can always tailor made the tour for them. Uh, Vietnam is also a great country for vegetarians and I can say so myself because I'm a vegetarian for 14 years now and Vietnam is probably the best country to live if you're a vegetarian. So it's not going to be a problem if, if we have clients with special food requirements. Okay, so this was a little bit what I wanted to share about uh, Ho Chi Minh City. We have these three special tools, and these are our top three experiences. And after collecting feedback from our clients, we can bet that these three experiences are unique and they are really, really successful. So this is why we said that we have to give Ho Chi Minh City a chance. Uh, one day is not enough, right? Because if we combine the city tour with uh, signature experience, so you want to go to the Coochie Tunnels and then do the motorbike street food tour, then one day will be very little. So always keep in mind that at least, at least two full days are, are a good option for, for Saigon and it's recommended. Okay, so now we will talk a little bit about the Mekong Delta. So a visit to Vietnam, we all know this, that a visit to Vietnam cannot be complete without a journey to the Mekong Delta, which is also known as Kulong in Vietnam, which means nine dragons in English. 
This name has been given due to the shape of the river and its nine tails flowing into southern Vietnam and Cambodia. So if you have access to the PowerPoint, you can actually see the tails of the river flowing into the, into the ocean. The Mekong region in Vietnam is quite long, and there are many ways to organize a visit from Ho Chi Minh City to the Delta. One of the reasons why the Mekong Delta is one of the highlights of southern Vietnam is due to the lively and colorful floating markets, right? So Canto is the largest city in the Delta. Kai Rang floating market is one of the biggest and popular markets in the Mekong, as well as one of the most crowded. The main principle of the floating market is to allow farmers and Vietnamese living on the surrounding villages to not only buy products, but also exchange products with other sellers. Life on the Delta is beyond our imagination, and it really shows Vietnamese essence and culture. The floating market at Cai Ve is also very popular, as well as the ones in Mito and Binh Long region, which due to their proximity to the city, receive many, many visitors every day, especially those ones that are visiting the Mekong only for one day. So this will be the day tours, right? So usually these areas will be very busy all day around. In the last days, actually, the Mekong Delta became quite busy, resulting in the floating market experience, giving the wrong impression to some travelers. In many cases, it happened to us that we tried to add the Mekong on the itinerary, but clients were not convinced as they heard from friends or family who were here that the Mekong was very touristy and at some point sort of boring for many people. However, I should mention that there are many places to visit in the Mekong Delta, unexplored and tourist-free places that show the real and genuine Mekong side. Places where the locals are super friendly and very surprised to see you as you're probably the only traveler they saw on that day or even on that week. So, of course, we have our own version of the Mekong Delta, right? So I will talk a little bit about uh, our Kiwi version of the Mekong Delta. So our excursion to the Mekong Delta takes the clients a little bit far away from the popular areas although still keeping Mekong's highlights. The trip starts departing from Ho Chi Minh City, traveling to Cholac, which you will see some pictures on the PowerPoint. Uh, Cholac is a rural district of Bentre province, where the clients will spend the night in a homestay. This homestay has many options for accommodation, but we prefer to arrange the private room with private toilet facilities for our clients. I stay in this house many times, and it's a great, great option. It's a really standard option, but the homestay has been built uh, two years ago, so it's really, the facilities are very well. The house is owned by Miss Queen Anne, and she always welcomes her guests with a big smile. Even if her English is limited, she will try her best to make sure our client stay works out perfectly. One of the things that I particularly loved from this homestay is the fruit garden surrounding it. Uh, Bentra region actually is a region that is very well known in Vietnam from the food, from the food, for the fruit garden, sorry. It takes just five minutes to walk around it and you will see all different types of Vietnamese fruit, fruits. In the early morning, it feels very good to go outside and take a deep breath. The combination of fruity smells and flowers is spectacular. The trip then continues with a lovely biking ride along the surrounding orchards, a visit to the local market of Cholac, ending the morning with lunch at a local arborist home. Here clients will get the opportunity of enjoying not only homemade meals in his house, but also of learning about his life and about the activities that he does as an arborist or a tree expert in Cholac. After lunch, the trip will continue to Sok Chang. So Sok Chang names come from the Khmer, and it means a place to store silver. This province not only is home to Vietnamese culture, but it's also home to Khmer culture. This is a province where the majority of the Khmer people in Vietnam lives, making Sok Chang a cosmopolitan region where Vietnamese and Khmer societies come together, resulting in a very interesting place to explore. One of the highlights of Sok Chang is the pagodas many of them built under the influence of the Khmer. 
I traveled to Subtran many times and having lived in Asia for many years, resulting in not getting that impressed with pagodas at the time, right? However, the pagodas that I visited in Subtran took my breath away, especially Chen Kyu Pagoda. This pagoda is a must see, and you will see a little picture of this pagoda on the PowerPoint. This pagoda has been decorated with millions of donated Chinese gold pieces due to the lack of construction material. Actually, the Buddhists of the pagodas were the ones that did this campaign to collect all these gold pieces, and the villagers from, the, from nearby were the ones that collected this from them. So you will see that the entire pagoda is decorated with, with a lot of colors and with all these bowl, Chinese bowl pieces. It's really, really pretty. The variety of colors and design will definitely blow everyone's minds away. I remember I couldn't stop taking pictures of it. Chen Kyu Pagoda is only one of the things that we do while visiting Sok Trang. And yeah, I will say that the highlight of this excursion to the Delta, it's not only the visit to the really particular pagodas, but also the visit to the handicraft village, where a class with a local artisan will be arranged and visitors will learn how to paint on glass and the tradition behind it. So the art of painting on glass was introduced in Vietnam by the Chinese more than a century ago. It soon became a decorative and worshiping element in Southern Vietnam, which represented the culture in each different region. The private painting on glass class will be held in the villagers' artist's home. Khmer people in Sok Chan have traditionally been famous for their glass painting abilities. Unfortunately, over the last years, painting on glass is starting to fade as not so many people are practicing it. Therefore, it's a really, really great opportunity for our travelers to experience firsthand this local craft and for the villagers to receive support on this traditional Vietnamese art. There are many reasons why Sok Chan is special to Kiwi. It's not only the unique pagodas and the opportunity to witness and participate on a private art class, but also Sok Chan's floating market, Nia Nam, is definitely a place to experience. The floating market is smaller in comparison to other markets, but it's a very, very busy one. Thanks to the confluence of five rivers, Hundreds of buyers and sellers meet on this extra extraordinary spot to exchange their products of their hard labor on the field for money or other goods they need. Even though it's recommended to visit the market in the morning, the market keeps the business going all day long, in some occasions even during the night. So this is something positive that we have, right? Because some floating markets in the Mekong uh, you will only be able to see the real uh, action on the market if you go very early in the morning. Sometimes we have to take clients to the market around 6 a.m., 7 a.m., especially to the big markets, right? Like the ones in Kanto. But in Subtran, the market is active all day long. So it's actually good to combine it. Anyway, we still suggest to visit the market early in the morning because early in the morning is when everyone is going there. So even if we can visit the market all day around, we will always suggest to visit it early in the morning. Visiting the markets by roving boat is a marvelous experience and the sellers, well, they are the friendliest one you will encounter. They will share with you their fruits, specialities, and they will even post with a big smile for your pictures. When I was here, I actually had very, very funny moments with the sellers in the market. One of the last destination of our Southern uh, Mekong experience is Kanto, where after spending one night in one of the many resorts and hotels in the city, we will visit the Kairan Floating Market. Kairan Floating Market is the most well-known market in the region, and of course it cannot be missed. So just to summarize a little bit, because of course I just gave a lot of information, the program that we suggest for the Mekong Delta is the following. So on day one, we will depart from Ho Chi Minh City to Ventre, and we will stay overnight at Cholak Homestay. On day two, we will go from Cholak to Sok Chan. On day three, we will go from Sok Chan to Kanto. And finally, on day four, we will go from Kanto to Ho Chi Minh City. With the exception of Kanto, the accommodation in Ventre and Sok Chan is quite standard, but all of them have been inspected by the team and by myself, and we have selected the best option in each city. 
So yes, yeah, so if you take a look at this outline itinerary, you will see that we have four days in the Mekong Delta. So usually if we visit a floating market in Kanto, that will be just maybe two days. We can do that in two days or in one day. But if we extend a little bit the program in the Mekong Delta up to four days, we can actually arrange a really nice experience for our clients. And, and I'm pretty sure that it will be an experience that they will remember forever. So it's always good to suggest just to extend a little bit more the program in the Mekong Delta. Okay, so this was a little bit what I was talking about, what I was going to talk about uh, regarding the Mekong Delta. So now we will move to the islands. I know this is a very, very favorite topic to everyone. Okay, so the last places I will talk about, as I said before, are the islands, and I will mainly focus in Fukuok and Kondao. Both islands are located in the southern region of Vietnam. In this case, I will talk more about the destination itself, how we can connect the destinations and the islands with the rest of the cities in Vietnam. We will also talk about the weather, and I will also provide a little bit description about each one of them. It's going to be a little bit general, but of course, if you have any questions, we will have the section later. Okay, so first, I will start talking about Fukuoka. So Fukuoka can easily be reached by flight from many destinations such as Ho Chi Minh City, Hanoi, Kanto, where the floating market is, and even Siam Rep in Cambodia. During high season, more international routes are available and more are planned to be arranged as Vietnam is preparing for Fukuoka Airport to be the fourth international airport in the country. So, so far we have Hanoi as an international airport, Saigon and Da Nang. The fourth airport to be open as an international one, it's planned to be Fukuoka. If travelers are coming to visit Fukuoka only, and not traveling in Vietnam, but visit Fukuoka only, they will get a visa-free entry. So this means that if we have uh, travelers, uh, clients traveling in Cambodia, and they want to spend five days in Fukuoka, besides of having this direct flight from Siam Rep, they will also have a visa-free entry. Okay, so this is something really positive. The island, anyway, can also be reached by speedboat from Ratjia. Uh, Ratjia is a pier which is located 100 kilometers away from Kanto. Speedboats usually depart in the morning, and it takes around two hours and a half to get to the island. So we organize this a lot of times, uh, because sometimes travelers don't want to go back to Saigon and then take the flight to Fukuoka, so they just can take the flight directly from uh, from Kanto, or even take the speedboat from Rajia. The thing about Rajia is that if we do this, then clients, if the clients leave, they have to leave very early in the morning, right? So they won't have the chance to visit the floating market in Kanto. So we always have to keep this in mind. If we want to take the flight, then the clients won't be able to visit the floating market. Okay, so we have a lot of possibilities to move, uh, to go to Fukuoka. And this means that after visiting the Mekong Delta, it's very easy to organize a couple of days at the beach without the need of traveling back to Saigon and taking the flight from there. This flight is available all year around, not only in high season. Okay, as we all know, uh, Fukuoka has been developing fast during the last years. And even if there are many resorts and hotels on the island, it has only been two years ago since the first five-star resort opened, and more luxury resorts are planning to be built on the island. Vin Pearl is a huge Vietnamese group, and they are already building a big resort in the northwest side of the island, including amenities such as casino, golf courses, and an amusement park. Even if this has side effects, right, because this is causing a little bit the disappearing of isolated uh, beaches, and due to the construction, however, there's still a hidden spot on the island, which can be discovered and enjoyed. On the positive side, thanks to the fast development uh, Fukuoka is experiencing and the investment of foreign companies, infrastructure has been improved a lot. Still, Fukuoka is a little paradise in Vietnam. And it, in a personal note, I will say that it's still one of my favorite places in the country. A couple of days on the island, adventurous trips discovering hidden beaches by motorbike and the spectacular seafood are just a little window on what Fukuoka paradise can offer. 
There are options for eco-research with favorable practices towards sustainability, and it's still possible to arrange a stay in Fukuoka a little bit far away from the central area. Beaches on the northern tip of the island are quiet, calm, and they still remain undeveloped, and some of them even undiscovered. So yes, yeah, so if we are even having a growth, a very, very fast growth in Fukuoka, there are still spots that can be discovered and there are still places like the ones you will see in the pictures that are very quiet. The good thing about Fukuoka is that it can be visited throughout the entire year. However, it's always good to keep in mind that during July and August, it might rain due to the rainy season period in the southern region of the country. November, December, and January are peak season, and Fukuoka gets super busy and fully booked easily. Therefore, I recommend keeping this in mind, especially for Christmas and New Year's bookings, as usually this is the busiest time of the year for the island, and the hotels get fully booked even one or two months in advance. So it's really good to, to make sure that we book the rooms for Fukuoka, the hotels in Fukuoka, sorry, in advance. So the next thing I will talk about is Kondao. Kondao is also located in southern Vietnam and similar to Phu Quoc, Kondao is Vietnam little hidden, Vietnam's little hidden paradise island. Flights depart from Saigon daily, especially during the morning, and they also uh, depart from Kanto, however, only certain days of the week. The flights to Kondao are done by really small planes, so again, flights get uh, flights get fully very easily. So we also have to book these flights in advance. I should also say that the frequencies to Kondao from Saigon are not too many. So we can have two, sometimes even one flight to Kondao. During high season, uh, Vietnam Airlines, which is the airline that we work the most, uh, they have much more frequencies, but during the year, they have one or two frequencies per day from uh, Ho Chi Minh City. Sorry. In terms of size, uh, Kondao is almost one third of Fukuoka land area. And if you travel to both islands, you can definitely feel this. Konson Island is the largest island of the Kondao archipelago, and it's where most of the accommodation facilities can be found. Options for accommodation in Kondao are very limited, having only two and three stars hotels and resorts with very basic facilities. However, on the other hand, the spectacular Six Senses Kondao, it's located in one of the most beautiful beaches of the island, offering five stars accommodation services. So we have, we have yeah, two and three stars hotels, and then we have a five stars hotel. So there is nothing in between. This is the only uh, thing, the only negative point that we have with Kondao. It's not very popular, popular yet, so there is, there is not too much construction of hotels and resorts. Besides the pristine and absolutely mind-blowing beaches that Kondao has, uh, Konson Island is also home to what it used to be French and American era prisons, where Vietnamese nationals were sent. It is here where the famous tiger cages can be found. If you visit some museums in Ho Chi Minh City and in Hanoi, you will see that they all show pictures about the tiger cages, and the original ones are the ones in Kondao, or Konson Island, so which is the main island of Kondao. It's actually quite impressive to visit them because they're still, the infrastructure is still there and they are usually empty, there is no one there. So it's really impressive when you're walking through the, through the tiger cages and through the entire prison. It's a really huge complex. I actually traveled the first time to Kondao for Christmas and New Year, a little bit more than one year ago. And I was completely impressed with the quietness of the island. Uh, coming from South America, we love, we love islands, we love beaches, we love clear skies, and, and Kondao was definitely a paradise for me. And every time I speak with everyone, I always try to talk about how good Kondao is and how this is a place that no one has to miss because it's a great, great place to visit, not only because of the island, but it's a really relaxing place. And you can walk around the island. There is one road that goes next to the beach. So you can walk through this road or take a bicycle or take a motorbike. And there are many things that you can explore. So one of the things that I was really, really impressed when I traveled to Kondao uh, was actually arriving to Kondao. So the plane, the very small plane surrounds the island before landing. 
so you can get a nice view of all the beaches and the clear, clear waters. You want to jump from the plane when you're up there because it's really, really beautiful and impressive. The airport is super small in Condao, and it's actually built right next to the ocean. And I remember landing and already knowing that this was going to be one of my favorite places of the country. We spent the days discovering the island by motorbike, going from one point to the other one, following the road, which was built next to the coast. We came across jungles, parks, an old lighthouse, pagodas, temples, and of course, the best hidden pristine beaches that could be found on the island. Again, Kondao is a great place to travel for a few days and a great way of ending a Vietnam highlight trip. The best time to travel to the island is from April to September, which is a little bit different from the rest of the southern region of Vietnam. But this is a time when sunny days welcome travelers. From October to March, there are very strong winds on the island. Then you can get some cloudy days. But rain is limited during the entire year, especially if clients are interested in diving, snorkeling, body courses, which Kondao is very famous for. April to September is recommended due to the clarity of the waters and the favor favorable visibility. When I travel, I travel in December and it was, we were there for five days or six days and we had two days of really close, blue skies and sunny days. Actually, the ones you can see on the pictures. This was only two days. The rest of the days, it was cloudy, but because of the strong winds. So summarizing a little bit, Kondao and Fukuok are very similar in many ways. Both islands impress guests with hidden beaches, warm stays, enjoyable swings, spectacular seafood, and friendly and welcoming islanders. The differences among them are that Fukuok is a bigger island and it's developing very, very fast lately. Whereas Kondao is still an off beaten track destination for many travelers. So if you, if you are thinking about doing something more off the beaten track, something more unique, something more special, then I will say that Kondao is actually a great option for this. Don't get me wrong, Fukuok is beautiful, but Kondao has that paradise effect a little bit, I would say. So it's also a great option. Okay, so this has been all what, what I prepared for today. So I think we can start with the questions. Okay, terrific. Flora, thank you so much. And we'll bring Michael back in as well. And um, we've got some good questions here. So I want to mm -hmm. jump right into those. Um, okay. We have a question of, about visas. Now, do uh, travelers need to arrange their visa in advance or can that be taken care of on arrival? Okay, so we have two ways of doing this. So every traveler, whenever they come to Vietnam, they all need to have a visa letter. Okay, so you can do the visa prior arriving to Vietnam. And if you do this, you have to go to an embassy in your country and you will probably get your visa and the visa stamp. So whenever you arrive to Vietnam, you go directly to the passport control and you're done. However, if you don't want to go to the, to the embassy or maybe you don't have an embassy in your city, you can do the visa on arrival. So we can assist on that. Uh, usually what we need is the passports from the clients and we will ask to the government for the visa letters. And this takes, let's say two, four business days to get back to us. And once we receive this, we will send it back to the agent. So this is very important because the, cli the agent has to give this letter to the clients. The clients has to have to print this letter and, they, and we will also give them a visa form. This form, what it will do, it will save a lot of time when you're at the airport. So together with the visa form, the visa letter, then you will be able to get your visa on arrival. But yes, you, we can do it on arrival or you can do it prior to arrival to Vietnam. Okay, and we have some Canadians listening today. Is it the mm -hmm. same requirement for them? Do Canadians require a visa as well? Some countries are exempt of visa. The law changes a lot, actually, Three months ago, five European countries were exempt of visa. But yeah, usually for all the other countries, if they require visa, uh, they will need, every traveler needs a, a visa to enter Vietnam with the exception of the countries that are exempted of visa, which are very few of them. But the process is the same for everyone. And floor, it does change if they're landing internationally versus if they're coming overland, is that correct? Yeah, of course. The visa can only be arranged for international airports. So if you are, for example, doing the transfer from 
uh, let's say the Mekong Delta to Cambodia, then you need to have your visa prior to arrival. Sorry, from Cambodia to Vietnam, you need to have your visa prior to arrival. You cannot do visa on arrival when it's crossing border. So the visas on arrival are only available for international airports. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so for the places that you discussed today, what mm -hmm. would you recommend for the amount of nights one should stay in each place? Okay, yeah, great question. So in Ho Chi Minh City, I will say that in order to get a good experience and, and, and to enjoy the city, because there are a lot of things to do in the city, I will say that two nights minimum are, are needed for Saigon. If then you want to stay a third night, that will be great too, but two nights for sure. Then when it comes to the Mekong Delta, uh, it depends where you go. But if we want to talk about the program we talked today about the off beaten track experience, then yeah, we, need, we definitely need three nights in the Mekong Delta to make sure that clients are able to get the full experience. Okay, and then what about the beaches? What would you suggest for how long to stay there? So for Pukwok and Kondao, I will say that it depends on what the clients are doing, but usually we, we add the beaches for relaxing time. And I say that three, day, three nights minimum are needed uh, because the islands are really, really nice and you can do snorkeling, you can do fishing excursions, uh, you can walk, you can enjoy the beach. And there are many, in Pukwok, for example, we have great resorts that offer a lot of spa services. So it's a great time for you to relax a little bit and you know, just enjoy the time being at the beach after a long trip in Vietnam. So I will say three nights, three nights minimum in Phuc and in Kondao, in both places. And I think okay. that's what's so fantastic about Vietnam. It's just the variety of places you can see. And so as Floor just mentioned, you have nine days or nine evenings and you get to see cosmopolitan Ho Chi Minh City, you get to explore the rural Mekong Delta and villages, and then you get to hang out in paradise on beautiful beaches, you can go snorkeling, you can get your paddy certificate. I mean, it's yeah. just outstanding, and that's just such a small section of the country. It's just, yeah. it's an amazing variety. Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, so what about, um, passengers who may be on some of the river cruises that are calling on Ho Chi Minh City and Hanoi. Do you mm -hmm. sell shore excursions for these passengers? You mean when they are right from the cruises, right? Yes, yes. Yes, of course, of course. We also, we also arrange excursions from the clients. We, have, we work with a couple of cruises actually, uh, and some of them do only day excursions in, for example, they arrive in Saigon. So we pick them up at the pier and we take them around this excursion they, they choose, of course, and we enjoy the full day and then we'll bring them back to the pier if they are going back to the boat. Uh, some other cruises uh, have longer stays in Vietnam and we also arrange this, let's say, cruise package extension for these cruises too. So of course, yeah, we can definitely do that. And speaking of extensions, are there some other ways to connect Vietnam to other countries? Can Kiri Travel help with that? Yes, of course, of course, especially, I mean, we work a lot with Cambodia, uh, with Laos, with Thailand, uh, but we can, we can arrange connections with every country we work with. And the best connections we do, and the most popular one, is the one with Vietnam and Cambodia, especially with Siem Reap. So we organize this type of program a lot. So it's really, really, it's a really good connection. Also, the one that we do a lot, very frequently, is when we connect <clears throat> Sorry, when we connect the Mekong Delta to Phnom Penh. So we take the clients from Ho Chi Minh City to Kanto and then to Chao Doc. And then from Chao Doc, which is in the border between Cambodia and Vietnam, we connect the clients to, be, uh, to Cambodia. And then the guide from the, from the Kiwi Cambodia team will pick them up and they will continue their trip in Cambodia. So this is also a very, very popular uh, excursion and extension for Vietnam oh, and Cambodia, oh. for example, yeah. Okay, good. So we had a question that came in about the best time of year to see Saigon. What are your thoughts about that? Living here, I will say that to Saigon, you can come at any time of the year, uh, especially lately. Lately, we, it's supposed to have, the rainy season is supposed to be around July and August, but it rains just for one hour or 40 minutes, and then the rest of the day, it's perfectly fine. Uh, so you can come to Saigon 
all through the year. It doesn't matter if it's December, July, January, all year around, the weather is fantastic. We have summer all year around, so every single day of the year is between 29, 34 degrees, so it's great. It's like living in summer all year around, so every, single, every time of the year is perfect to travel to Saigon. Oh, good, okay. So I had a question about uh, festivals. Is traveling recommended during Tet Festival? Hmm. Yeah, so this is a, a really, really good question because people ask, this, people ask this question to us a lot. So the thing about Tet is that some of the places are closed, especially the floating market during Tet. There are three days during Tet that all the shops and everyone goes back to their hometowns. So the cities are ghost town during these three days especially Hanoi and Ho Chi Minh City. However, if you travel a little bit more in the countryside, uh, you, can, you can have the chance of actually seeing all these events that are taking place, right? You can see the celebrations and, and you can actually join on these celebrations. So it's actually, it's a good time because you have the opportunity to see things that you won't see if you're not traveling in Tet. But at the same time, we have to be careful because a lot of things can be closed. Museums can be closed, floating markets can be closed. So yeah, so we have to be a little bit careful with this, but it is a good time because you can have the chance to see things that you are not expecting to see, surprising things. So, and things that would actually show you the culture. Tet, which is a new year in, in Vietnam, it's a really, really big, uh, a really, really big celebration here. So it's quite nice if you can actually, if travelers can actually experience that, taking into mm. consideration that some, some places, some museums uh, might be closed. Okay. We have some more weather-related questions. Mm -hmm. There's a question about whether there are months that you can't fly out to the island. Mm. You can fly to the island all year around. Uh, I, said before, I mentioned before this in Fukuok, for example, during July and August, it might happen that it can rain because it's season in the south. But I traveled to Fukuok in July and Usually the rainy season here, it doesn't affect very much. It's just one hour of the day, usually takes place at noon. So the rest of the day is great and flights, they always depart. So there is not a big issue with flights from Saigon uh, to the islands during rainy season. So we can fly all year around. That will be, that will be perfectly fine. Okay. All right, last weather related question is, um, is there a time of year that is more humid? Yes, of course. During the months, May and April are the months that are, it's, it's really, really hot and really heavy in the country. Uh, it's summertime also. So weathers can be around 36 degrees, but it's also a great time to travel because it's low season. So not only prices are really really good but also the country is really really quiet so you can see that you're traveling in Hue for example and there is almost no one at the citadel in Hue so this is a really really great experience too right and also during April and May these are the two months that throughout the entire country we have the same weather and it's really warm and it's really heavy it's humid but you just have to avoid being under the sun between 12 and three o'clock. So if you go out very early in the morning, before noon, you will be fine. And then around four o'clock, that will be great because around six o'clock here is already, the sun is coming down. So if you just avoid these two, three hours at noon, it will be perfectly fine. Okay. And I, it, and we've had uh, several people asking for your contact information. So I'm going to have you move along one more slide while we are still talking here. Perfect. Thank you, Floor. Uh, let's see. Um, okay. You got several people very hungry today. I have some food questions for you. Oh, of course. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> okay. We, and, and I actually have to admit, I don't know how to pronounce this either. So the request is for you to pronounce the word <clears throat> pho, P-H-O. Is it pho? Is it pha? How is it pronounced? I studied Vietnamese for almost one year, and I'm still not that good at it. But it's, <laughs> I, I practice a lot. I think it's pho, pho. But it's difficult because it's a very tone language. So it's quite challenging to say it right. 
And again, I studied for a long time, right? It's really difficult to get the pronunciation right. But from what I learned, it's fa, fa. Okay, I don't know if good. I <laughs> and speaking of fa, now that we've talked about it, <laughs> yeah. there was another question here about, um, is it safe to eat uh, the raw vegetables and so forth that might be served on the soups that you might find in some of the street food restaurants? Yes, of course. I mean, all the places we, we use for the street food too, for example, they all have been tested by us. So all of them are really good, pla good places and the food is safe. Some people have this feeling sometimes that they are not very sure, but then we can always switch to some restaurants if they feel more comfortable. But anyway, I, in my humble opinion, I will say that it's really, really good if you can try street food in, in Saigon. Of course, you have to be careful in Vietnam, not in Saigon, sorry. Of course, you have to be careful, but the street food is one of the best parts of the country. So it is safe to eat raw uh, vegetables. That's not a problem. Uh, maybe just travelers should be a little bit careful with meat, uh, fish. But some places, you know, you, you will realize which places have good quality and which places look clean and you will be you will feel comfortable eating there so my my advice is that you you have to tr everyone has to try the street food i mean that's that's part of the country you know mm -hmm. and i think yeah. one of the big reasons to do a street food tour with a guide is that you do have that extra reassurance that you know floor has been here and vetted this place and the guide can always lend different ideas of course the client experience on the ground is always most important so nothing's set in stone it's all a discussion between themselves and the guides and so exactly. going with a guide you can get comfortable and then therefore moving on in your journeys you feel a little more professional and you get a little more um, confident going forward once you've had some discussions with your guide yeah yeah and the guides are always really flexible so imagine you get to this place and you don't feel comfortable in there, then that's not a problem. We can always change and move to the next one. So that's, that's fine. The guides will always be open to, to modify things and make sure that clients are happy and comfortable. Mm -hmm. Okay. So what about drinking water? There are several people interested in knowing whether the drinking water is safe. You don't have to drink water from, I mean, you always have to drink, but, uh, sorry, you always have to drink water from bottles. So make sure that you don't drink bottles from the tap because the water is not safe here. So you always have to drink, you always have to buy your bottle of water or you can re reuse your bottle and you can fill it in at the hotel or at restaurants, but always make sure that you have your water with you, that you buy the water, that you are not taking water from the tap. And floor also going off of our us being a member of Travelers Against Plastic, we yes. can also supply the guide with a really big jug of water. So therefore, you can just keep refilling your Nalgene, which is always mm -hmm. fantastic as it reduces the use of plastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. That's good to know. Okay, let's see. We're getting down to our last few questions here. A couple of business questions, Michael. This one's for you. What is the largest group that you can handle? Um, you know, we've done large meetings, incentives groups, and things like that, so there's really no limit. Of course, it's all about just the right preparation and working towards it, but yes, we've done large uh, businesses and things like that where it's in the, you know, I think the one in Laos, the last one I remember is 100-something, so, you know, we can do whatever they need. Okay, and then can you also handle independent travelers? Does it, does it have to be group travel? Yes, we do actually, you know, we work all over the world, and I will say that we do a fair balance of group travel and FIT travel. Here in the States, I do often see much more FIT travel, and so then I'm always willing to help the agent prepare that custom itinerary specifically to their client's interest, budget, length of travel, things like that. That's something we really specialize in is really creating the ideal trip for each inquiry. And then they have a privately guided tour tailored exactly to what they're looking for. And I'm more than happy to help do that. Okay. All right. Well, I think that covers it. I want to leave you both some time for any closing comments that you might have. So I will pass along any questions that are unanswered. And I am going to turn it back over to both of you for closing comments. 
Sure. Well, first of all, I definitely want to thank you, Lee, for helping us out. It's always fantastic to have you in on these so you can focus on some of the other stuff while we focus on the content and what we're passionate about, which is travel. And then, of course, a very big thank you to Floor. Every single time I hear you talk about Vietnam, I'm counting down the days until I return there. I just absolutely love that place so much, and I can't help but get excited every time you for how passionate you are about it, and it really rubs off. So thank you for that. And also thank you everyone else for listening. And of course, this is just a one hour webinar, but I'm available whenever you might need. So whether that is through Skype, a phone call, email, you let me know and I'll be happy if you need. Great, and Floor, did you have anything else you wanted to share before we say goodbye? Yes, of course. So yeah, the same thing that Mike said. So really thank you to for everyone to be present to attend this webinar today. And I'm really happy that I was able to share all this information with you. And of course, again, if you have any question or if there's any clarification you want to receive or you want to get more information, pictures, whatever it is that you need, of course, you don't hesitate to contact me. So you have my email address there and I will be more and more than happy to, to help you too. And thank you and very be on much. The lookout. Yeah, and be on the lookout as we continue to do these educational travel webinars, uh, not only for the rest of Vietnam, which Flora will be able to tell us about, but then many of our other destinations as well. So thanks again, everybody, for being with us, and this will conclude the webinar. Goodbye, everybody, and Flora, thank you for staying up into the wee hours for us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye now.